went and on the way home, I, I, I made this out the window. <laughs> Trying <laughs> it out, yeah. I, I thought, okay, whoever's behind it, the that blue. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go like this, and it's going this way. We're all kind of annoying. But it's, uh, I see them when it's a little heavier. There we go. The guy went up to the mailbox today. Well, our note, when we ordered the Notre Dame one, I ordered the case for Good afternoon. We've grown in size since last weekend, so that's a good sign. So thank you for coming. Um, may I ask, uh, do you like this setting? Could I see some hands? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, once again, those of you that are, are new with us this weekend, because we are out in the fresh air the way we are, because we are socially distant, you do not have to wear your mask during Mass. All we ask is at the end of Mass that you have your mask on for the reception of Holy Communion. Uh, Holy Communion will be distributed as you're leaving the cemetery. So at the final blessing, take your time, make your way back to your cars. I will be up at the end of the road with a couple volunteers one will have a basket to take your envelopes if you're going to make a contribution this weekend to the collection and i will give you holy communion it's not necessary to get out of your car i will go around you know the car if there's more than one person in the car all i ask is that you put your car in park don't leave it in gear because you know if you run me over we're not going to get another priest so uh so i just ask that you do that uh, so, but we are out in the fresh air, so it'll be okay to do that. Uh, as you heard, the governor announced yesterday that we are going to go green next Friday. Uh, we're still not totally certain what that means. I think it's probably going to be better to say we're going yellow-green uh, because there will still be restrictions. Uh, we'll still have to wear masks in public. We'll still have to maintain social distance. Uh, the good thing is that uh, the barbershops and the beauticians uh, will be, be open so we can get our haircuts and get our hair done. Uh, the theaters will be open. Uh, the bars will be open. And restaurants can seat a limited number of people inside. We can probably increase our number in church by just a little bit, but the question I have is if we have to increase social distance, if we have to maintain social distancing, I do not know how we're going to be able to increase the number of people in church. We have a meeting on Monday, and I'll have more answers then. But for now, please assume that unless the weather is bad next Saturday, we will be here for 4 o'clock Mass, and I'll keep you updated whether or not we're going to remain here or if we're going to move back to the big church. Right now, I enjoyed Mass here last weekend. I know I'm pumped for this weekend. And as long as you're happy, we might as well just do this for the remainder of the summer unless it's going to get beastly hot or rainy. So uh, we'll keep you all informed. Just please pay attention to the website and also to the YouTube channel for special commercials. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment and call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in our hearts the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will, I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Laud, O Zion, your salvation. Laud with hymns of exaltation. Christ your King and Shepherd true, bring him all the praise you know. He is more than you bestow, never can you reach his due. Special theme for glad thanksgiving is the quickening and the living, bread today before you set. From his hands of old partaken, 
as we know by faith unshaken, where the twelve at supper met. Full and clear ring out your chanting, joy nor sweetest grace be wanting. From your heart let praises burst, for today the feast is holden, when the institution olden of that supper was rehearsed. Here the new law's new oblation, by the new king's revelation, ends the form of ancient rite. Now the new the old faces, truth away the shadow chases, light dispels the gloom of night. When he did at supper seated, Christ ordained to be repeated, his memorial never to cease. And his rule for guidance taking, bread and wine we hallow making, this the truth each Christian learns. Bread into his flesh he turns, to his precious blood the wine. Sight has failed, nor thought conceives, but a dauntless faith believes, resting on a power divine. Here beneath these signs are hidden, priceless things to sense forbidden. Signs, not things, are all we see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints, though lowest, where the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when, the, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent them two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned to you last week how great it was for us to be able to gather here and to be able to see all of you. You know, even though I am very much an introvert, a quiet person, a liked person that likes to be alone, I need to be around people. And I realize, and I hope maybe you in your own way, have realized how much you as a parish family mean to me and to each other. We might not always talk, we might just say hello or goodbye before the end of Mass. But I know when you're there and when you're not there. I know the pews where you sit. And when I don't see you there, I wonder where you are. That sense of real presence is important to all of us. We are not necessarily meant to be socially distant or socially isolated. I know it has been a challenging time for me particularly as a priest over the last three months because I really do not think that I am technologically gifted. I try and do everything I can in my head. I keep a written calendar I like to take notes with a pad and pencil. I like to read from a real book. And all of this technology at times confuses me. There are so many applications that we are required to know in the rectory, and I fumble through all of them if it wasn't for the great staff I have. But one of the biggest challenges for me 
when we realized how long we were going to be down and out was the diocese began to start all these Zoom meetings and all these teleconferences. And maybe for some of you that do it every day of the week, it's a piece of cake. For me, it was very difficult. And even though when I finally was able to figure some things out or I had some people talk me through it, just hearing someone distantly on the end of the phone or seeing a face on the computer screen or trying to read a document that the bishop sent me over the computer screen, it just did not cut it. I am a hands-on person. I like to be around people. I need to be around people. Today we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi. Jesus became truly God and truly man. He did not fake being human. Rather, he felt our pain and our suffering. And he lived our life so that he could understand the challenges and the sufferings and the hurts that we go through. He did not blow our humanity off with be by being God and faking it. And so he gave us a great gift. He gave himself to us, his own body and blood, which since the creation of the church has been our most blessed, blessed and most sacred tenant that Jesus suffered and died and gave us the Eucharist out of love. He gives us his true flesh and his true blood. Many people told me that the hardest part about a Sunday was not being able to go to Holy Communion. They needed to be able to receive the Lord to know that his presence was in them, in the taste of the bread on their tongue, in the prayers that they uttered afterwards. We need to keep things real. We need that skin-to-skin -skin touch. We need that face-to-face -face communication. And Jesus provides us with that in his Eucharist, in his body and his blood. More than 40% of all Catholics have, forgive me, but they become Protestant. They don't believe that the words of consecration change the bread and wine into Jesus' own body and blood. They believe it's just a theatrical performance, a reenactment. But a true believers know Jesus gave himself to others. He shed his blood for us. And I truly believe that all of you, last week and this week, making this trick, trek to the cemetery, truly believe that your going to Mass is important and you're giving this hour to God as important because Jesus comes to you in a special way. We don't do it out of obligation. We don't do it out of duty. But we do it out of love and friendship. The same way for those of us who have loved ones that we need to tell them that we love them. That we need to gently hold a hand or give a kiss on the cheek. To be able to share moments together. Watching them on TV, watching them on YouTube, it's a nice way for us maybe to get a feel. But in the end, we all need that human touch. And on this, the feast of Corpus Christi, Jesus gives us his human touch. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us in the silence of our hearts recall the needs which we offer to Almighty God. We pray for our Holy Father, for our Bishop Alfred. We pray for our Diocese of Allentown and all our priests and all our laity that God will continue to bless us and keep us close to his precious body and blood. We pray for our nation which right now is going through such turmoil with the struggle of the pandemic of coronavirus and now with racism. We pray for all those who are sick, the spike in our nation, especially in the southern states of the coronavirus. We pray for all the sick of our parish. We pray for all those lonely. We pray for all those elderly and abused. We pray for all those unemployed. We also pray for our families and our loved ones. And lastly, remember all our beloved dead, especially the intention of our Mass tonight. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer. Fruit of the field and work of human hands, let it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your people by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race bound by one world may be enlightened by a faith and be united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration as we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all the people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with St. Clair of Assisi, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that sharing in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As always, thank you for coming. Uh, we'll have the guys out on the, the road the way we did last week to make sure that you get out on the road safely. Please watch what they do. Uh, I'm going to go under the tree where I was. I'll ask for a couple of volunteers to help me uh, as I give you Holy Communion and they take your collection envelopes. Please remember to put your car in park so you don't hit me. And also one other thing. This Friday is the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, I know some of you work, but from 8.30 in the morning when we have morning Mass until noontime, we'll have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament uh, to pray against, you know, for all our needs, especially for the needs of our country right now, especially for these uh, terrible number of weeks of racism. Uh, and we'll conclude then with benediction and the litany of the Sacred Heart at 12 noon. So I hope you pass that word around and I hope you uh, join us. So I'm going to make my way up to the end of the road. Uh, you please make your way over to your cars. Uh, be careful, do it gently, and take your time. We'll wait for you. God bless. So we'll see you over there then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Brian, if you have time to help me with the hand sanitizer, I'll wait for you. Okay. It's in the basket, so Ralph will have it. There's a towel. So if we have time. No, we don't. Okay. Just, you're gonna, if I need my hand sanitized, I'll just ask for this spray. Here's your face. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hang on to it. Yeah, take care.